talented are those kids? Wow. Uh, my name is Jordan Goldman, Executive Vice President at Castle Group, Family's First Board Member, and your co-chair for the 14th Annual Luncheon. I'm pleased to be here celebrating with you on this very special day. In previous years, we've also showcased the artwork from these talented young people. We know expression through art can be a channel for healing. Today, we'd like to share the wonderful expressions of art they've created for you. If you can believe it or not, these talented kids are in fifth and sixth grade. They remind us why Families First has been successful for over 30 years. Every child has a voice that needs to be heard. You'll hear from me a little bit later, but right now I'd like to remind you that this is your last chance to purchase raffle tickets uh, for an Airbnb stay valued at $500. This can be used anywhere you choose. If you're anything like me, I know you can use a getaway. Uh, in just a few minutes, you'll be receiving a text message. Please click on the link to purchase tickets. The winner of the raffle will be announced and notified at the end of this event. Hello again. I'm not as good looking as the world famous Jordan Goldman. However, I'm honored to be a co-chair of this wonderful event. My name is Ronnie Nunez. I'm a board member of Families First, and during the day, I'm a corporate banker with BBVA. While this is Families First 14th Annual Luncheon, today, we're also making history by hosting our first ever virtual luncheon. With that, I would like to thank all of our sponsors listed on the screen, 
for continuing to support us during these challenging times. On behalf of our board of directors and staff, we would like you to know that we truly appreciate your ongoing support. Like all families, we as humankind must adapt and change. As a nation, we've been tested and challenged this year in unprecedented ways. Today, we ask you to listen to two short prayers. Regardless of your beliefs, sometimes we all need a voice of compassion and healing. Before I say the invocation, I just wanted to acknowledge that I'm standing in the Peace Chapel at St. Mark's where Betty Bell was a longtime member and the cross on top of this building was given to the church by Betty who also introduced me and St. Mark's to the good work of Families First. So it's an honor to be standing here uh, with the great founders of the organization in the midst of our prayers. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the many blessings of this life and for your ongoing care for us, even amidst the many fears that burden our hearts this day. We thank you for the rich variety of the human family, and we pray that you would help us to take away the arrogance and hatred which infects our hearts and help us to break down walls that separate us. We thank you for those who day and night in good times and in tough times maintain public services. We thank you for the men and women in our military and for their families. We thank you for our teachers and school administrators as they toil faithfully and lovingly to educate our children. We thank you for those who bear the responsibility of leadership among the nations of the world, that they may serve with humility, wisdom, justice, and respect. And we thank you for the incredible service of Families First and for the commitment and hard work of Julie Swindler and her staff and board members who strive to love all children and their parents, especially when times are tough and tears are flowing and the world looks so, so dark. Into this darkness, Families First shines a light that brings hope. Inspire all of us who gather this day, separated by a virus but united in love, to be generous in giving financially to support Families First so that light grows brighter and the tears of those who weep are wiped away. Grant all of us a vision to see the dignity of every human being and give us grateful hearts for all that we receive from you and help us find joy this day and always. In God's name we pray, amen. It is a great honor and a privilege to be able to present blessings and prayers on behalf of an outstanding organization, Families First. The Bible in Genesis begins the story of mankind with the story of Adam and Eve. And what the Bible is teaching us is that no matter how large the world's population grows to, we should always remember that we were a family first. Today we talk about strengthening our nation, but what we must remember is that the bedrock and the foundation of a nation is built on strong families. The more we strengthen our families, the stronger our nation will be. A matter of fact, the word family the six letters, F-A-M-I-L-Y, is an acronym for six words, which spell, Father and Mother, I love you. And what the word is teaching us is that in order to have a strong nation, we have to have strong families. But in order to have strong families, we have to have parents, father and mother, who say to one another, I love you. And when children grow up in a loving, warm, and joyous family, then they in turn turn to their parents and say, Father and Mother, I love you. And so especially this time of the year, when we come to the high holidays and we say, God, our Father in heaven, bless us for a good new year, especially during all the challenges we're facing, we must remember that God is our Father in heaven because we are his children on earth. And like any father, you are proudest when your children love one another and support one another. And so the message of the high holidays to all of us is, let us treat each other like brothers and sisters, because when one family member is suffering, the entire family feels the pain, and that's what Families First does best. They care for every member of every extended family. Thank you, Rabbi Shine and Reverend Cook for your words of wisdom. I'm sure everyone will agree that sometimes we need some spirituality and kind words to help us reflect. As many of you know, Families First has made a difference to over 45,000 families and children over the past 30 years. It has done so by providing support, guidance, case management, and therapeutic services. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to Ashley. So, my name is Ashley, and I am a mother of two. A girl and a boy. 
And when Anime was born, I think I had a bit of postpartum, but I really didn't know because I was just kind of in flight or fight mode. And we just kind of pushed through. And when Joshua came on board, I could definitely feel that there was something not quite right. And my midwife asked if I needed help at home. And I'm not a type of person that likes to ask for help at all. And I was like, no, I really don't need help. And my husband kind of spoke up a little bit. He's like, well, what kind of help are you asking for? And finally she said, Ashley, I don't think you're okay. Do you need help? Well, if somebody was available. And she said, hey, listen, I know this great pro program uh, through Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. She did a questionnaire with me and it led me to Families First. I met with a wonderful woman. She came to the house a couple days later, actually. It was really fast. And when Families First came in, they asked kind of what, was I, what I was expecting and I had no idea. And it was great. I had two individuals come into the home and work with me, work with my children, asked a number of questions. And the questions that they were asking, it was really interesting because they were asking me questions I didn't realize needed to be asked. I didn't realize that they were issues that I needed addressing. Um, and I didn't realize just how beneficial that questionnaire was going to be. I have a history of abuse in my family, um, a very long history of abuse. So when I had a daughter, it was a real challenge for me. And when I had a son, I was elated. And there was a lot of emotions that I didn't understand what was happening to me. And a lot of this was stemming from the abuse that, that I experienced as a child. They actually taught me a whole new way of engaging with my children. But as time went on, I could actually feel the connection with him and I could feel the love with him. So I was able to take what I was doing with my son and applying it to my daughter as well. We were able to dive a little bit into why I was struggling with the connections and why I was having anxieties. And postpartum anxiety is real. The Family Service was able to help me work through that. They were able to give me resources on positive discipline and working through my own stress. I've learned some coping skills on how to manage my own stress and my own anxieties. I do feel a sense of accomplishment. I feel like I'm actually reconnected with my children. Families, especially if they've had trauma in their past, we have anxieties and sometimes we really need somebody just to help us figure out why we're being triggered why we're having certain anxieties, why we're having these feelings, because it's not always, it's not just us. And it's a good way to kind of reconnect with yourself and reconnect with your children. And it's an invaluable service. And I will forever be grateful for the opportunities that I had to be a part of Families First. Good afternoon, my name is Raul Mercator and I'm the president of the operations board. I'm also a senior risk advisor at Insurance Office of America. That video was truly inspiring. Ashley is a very special person and a strong mother. She is a prime example of the woman we work with each and every day. As the board president, I have made a commitment to families first. And I would also like you to consider the same with a gift that will help us continue our life-changing work. You'll be receiving a donation text. Please consider a gift to Families First and click on the link sent to you. Now I would like to introduce this year's keynote speaker. He is an incredibly accomplished attorney and community leader. Mac Bernard was born in Haiti and traveled to the United States for a better life. He worked hard, faced many challenges along the way, and ultimately became the first Haitian American Palm Beach County Commissioner. In 2018, the mayor of the district. I am honored to present Commissioner Mac Bernard as this year's keynote speaker. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mac Bernard, County Commissioner for District 7. It is truly an honor to be your keynote speaker for the 14th annual Children's Day Luncheon by Families First. As a father of three girls, I know that our children 
are the, are the future of Palm Beach County, the state of Florida, the United States, and the world. And we must do everything in our power to give our children the tools that are necessary to be successful in this world. Now, many people in Palm Beach County are familiar with Mac Bernard, the county commissioner. Mac Bernard, the former mayor of Palm Beach County. Mac Bernard, the former state representative. And Mac Bernard, the former city commissioner of Delray Beach. But what most people are familiar with is the trials and tribulations that has led me to the path where I'm at today. Well, first of all, I was born in a poor family, in one of the poorest country in the hemisphere, Haiti. And tragedy struck early. At three months old, my birth mother, who had two children older than me, couldn't afford to take care of this newborn. And so she gave me away to my aunt and my grandmother. And my father, who had already migrated to the United States, had left. And so at three months old, being a sickly baby, being raised by an aunt and a grandmother who just took care of me and who just loved me, I was able to survive as a child. And I remember just thinking about wanting to come to United States and I remember at the age of four, each year that I tried, we would go to the embassy, the U.S. Embassy in Haiti, to try to get a visa. And for six years in a row, I was denied a visa to come to the United States. But in 1986, at the age of 10, when baby Doc was thrown into exile, Haiti was in chaos. Finally, we were able to get a visa to come to the United States. And so my aunt and my grandmother gave my sister the opportunity to come to the United States. And we were just happy and just excited about coming to this new country. So in September 19, 1986, the two of us took that Eastern Airline flight. I was 10 and she was 12. And excited as two new kids to come to the United States, we were happy. And when we arrived in the United States in Florida at the Miami airport, a taxi picked us up and they dropped us off in Delray Beach. Now, my aunt had a friend who had lived in Delray Beach. And so she sent us to live with that friend that had lived in Delray Beach. But many people in the community had thought that we needed help. And so in churches, I remember Pastor Frank uh, in Delray Beach who um, got us stuff that was from Goodwill, clothes to enroll us in school and food. And so many people in the churches who provided the necessary tools that for us to start school. And so I enrolled at Pine Grove Elementary School, didn't speak English, and was picked on and trying to in the ESOL program. And so in fifth and sixth grade, I decided that I was going to try to do the best that I can. So I finished Pine Grove went to Carver Middle School. And when I was in Pine Grove, I had left the ESOL program. But then when I started at Carver Middle School, they said I had to be thrown back into the ESOL program to start over. And I was like disappointed. And so I had to go back to the ESOL program. 
and then to be able to learn more English and to read and write. And then so I remember when I got to seventh grade, that's when t things changed. And I remember like the second semester in seventh grade, I received a 4.0 GPA. I was happy and excited. And Miss Flynn, who was one of my teachers, and she gave me this button that said, Mac, you are one in a million. And so I was like, wow, this was, I was happy and excited. And so I continued to, middle school and finished eighth grade and then I decided I wanted to go to to Atlantic High School. So I went to Atlantic High School and so initially I started, I joined the wrestling team, I joined the ROTC program and so I did wrestling for four years and I was a good wrestler so I was, I can beat you and take you out in an instant so, uh, so I was a wrestler and I did ROTC for four years and so I decided like I wanted to be the best that I could be in high school. And then when it came time to go into college, you know, my sister and I were, we talked about it. She was two years ahead of me, so she was already at Florida State. And we had made the decision that I would go to Florida State. Uh, what I did was while I was in high school, I did dual enrollment while I was in high school. So by the time that I finished high school, I already had college credits. And then so I enrolled at Florida State University. And because of the fact that my sister and I, we worked while I was in high school and saved the money. And so we had just enough money for me to go to college. And so she was like, hey, we can, you can only be in college for two years. And so I was like, hey, we're going to figure it out. So I took 21 credits a semester. That's seven classes every semester to make sure that I was able to complete college in two years. So I graduated high school in 1995 and I graduated college in 1997. After college, I decided I want to be a lawyer. And so I applied to go to law school and I applied to go to Florida State University and University of Florida. Luckily, I was accepted at University of Florida. And while I was at University of Florida, uh, law school is for three years. And I did law school in two years because I wanted to finish up. And then I decided I want to be a tax lawyer. And I did the tax program in one year. So I've been an attorney in Palm Beach County since 2002. For 18 years, I've been an attorney in Palm Beach County. So when I graduated from law school, I started in Lakeland, Florida as a tax lawyer. And then I came immediately to Palm Beach County. So I joined the Chamber of Commerce and to get involved and to give back in Delray Beach. So I started as a city commissioner and then I became a state representative for three years. And then I decided I was going to run for state senate. And when I ran for state senate, I lost by 17 votes. votes. And some people thought that that would shake me because I lost by 17 votes. But I was like, you, didn't, you don't know what I went through uh, in my life. So losing by 17 votes means like I can get back, I can bounce back. And then four years later, I decided that I wanted to be a county commissioner so I can make changes in Palm Beach County. So I've been a county commissioner for the past four years, making policies to make sure that we're creating more opportunities for our small businesses more opportunities for housing in Palm Beach County. And so being a county commissioner, and now we're dealing with COVID, which has changed the environment in Palm Beach County. Uh, we're doing this luncheon different because of COVID. And many of our families have been impacted by COVID. And as we recover from COVID, which has caused a health crisis, an economic economic crisis where many of our businesses closed and we've lost so many jobs in Palm Beach County. I want to thank families first 
for continuing to provide the need for strengthening our families, for providing health care, and providing the nutritional needs and housing since 1990. Now, I never thought in a million years that this kid whose parents had left, who had never met his parents, would get the opportunity to come to the United States at the age of 10, and then to be able to graduate high school, and then having the audacity to be able to go to college and to graduate in two years instead of four, and then to go to law school, and then to be a tax attorney. That's a testament to God, and it's a testament to many people in the community who has helped me to get to where I'm at. And I want to thank everybody in this community for doing their part and thanking families first for doing everything they can to continue to help all of our families in Palm Beach County. This is the 14th annual luncheon, and I want to thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you to the board of Families First. Thank you to all of the workers who have put in day in and day out to help the families. And thank you to all of the residents of Palm Beach County. Thank you. we have and thank you Matt for share for allowing us to get to know you better your story is an inspiration and reminder to all of us of the profound challenges that many people face and we are hardened by your resilience and that of so many families served by families first who face overwhelming odds each and every day each year families first recognizes an individual who has made an outstanding contribution to the most challenged children and families in Palm Beach County we do so with the presentation of the Harriet Goldstein Award. This award is named after a long-standing board member who was a dedicated social worker and advocate for children and families. The committee this year selected Mr. Eric Kelly, who takes time from his busy role as president of the Quantum Foundation to give back to his community. Mr. Kelly began his career 20 years ago in Florida's capital city at the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice in the Bureau of Prevention and Intervention. This position was a good introduction to his professional development and a great match for his personal passion. As a child, Eric grew up in the housing projects with his mom and two sisters. After witnessing the impact of economic depravity in a community, early in life, he developed a passion for helping other families living in poverty who desired a better quality of life. Along with his work at the Quantum Foundation, Eric had served as chairman of the Healthy Coalition of Palm Beach County and currently serves on the board of the and the executive committee of the Economic Council of Palm Beach County. Eric, I know you've already received your award, but please, uh, I would like for you to say a couple words. I thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate uh, this opportunity. Uh, and first of all, let me just say to the benefactors, thank you all so much. You've been acknowledged multiple times. But again, I want to say thank you for your contributions to Family First. What an amazing organization. To you, Julie, my friend, my peer, uh, and to the amazing team, the staff, and to the board of Families First. I get to actually call Ronnie Nunez as a personal friend of mine. So it's, it's pretty cool to be able to be on here with you. And for the kids who play beautifully this morning, my first love is music, uh, the arts. So that was absolutely amazing. And then to hear the story of Mac Bernard, uh, I just sent him a text. Mac, I hope you get my text. Literally, I was sending a text just as Ronnie was introducing me. I just wanted to let you know, man, what an amazing, amazing story. 
And as I said in my text, you are one amazing brother. So I, I want to thank you, Families First, for this honor. Um, I say it this way, it is incredible. It is an incredible honor to be acknowledged by peers. There's something that's special about being acknowledged by our peers. I am a peer. I am a nonprofit trained, worked in the nonprofit sector for all of my career. The time that I spent in state government up in Tallahassee, came here uh, to work here in Palm Beach County, and all of my career in Palm Beach County has been in the nonprofit and philanthropic sector. So to be acknowledged by my peers is incredible. So I'd like to say thank you uh, to you, to Julie, to the board of Families First, to the benefactors. I'm grateful you saw a quick picture there of my family, to my wife, Kira, our four children, Madison, Mason, Miles, Malachi, our dog, the dog that we rescued some years ago. She had a different name, but it didn't go with the M selections. And so we had to rename her Meadow. She was too young to remember, so don't worry about her name being confused. It's okay, folks. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, Julie. Grateful for all your work. Please continue to do what you do. We'll always need you. We'll always need your organization. We'll always need the great work that you do. I will continue to do my part. And together, I do believe we'll make this a much better place, better world for not only us to live in, but for our children and our children's children and their children for generations to come. We'll get to enjoy a better place. Um, so again, thank you very much. I'm gonna turn it back over to you, my friend, Ronnie. After listening to Commissioner Bernard and Eric Kelly speak and seeing all of our wonderful sponsors, I truly feel privileged to be part of this outstanding organization. It's hard to uh, not come away from this today being very inspired. As a result of Family First work, uh, so many families are independent and their children are now thriving. So many of those served by Families First that face trauma that few of us could ever imagine. Allow me to introduce you to Hurricane Yeah. From the time I was three years old, I was a victim of molestation by a family member, an uncle actually, um, up until the time I was 11. And then it continued until I was maybe about 16 years old. And that was by a, a boyfriend of my mother's. I was also physically abused by my mom's husband from the time I was probably two up until 10. As a teenager, I was troubled. I was a troubled um, child. I used to get in fights a lot. I, I was bullied. I became the bully. But I, I didn't understand what depression really, really was at that time. So I used to cut my arm and, and do things like that because I didn't, I wanted to feel like a numbness. <laughs> Found myself um, being pregnant and it was the best experience that I could ever imagine. After I had my daughter, uh, she was five days old. We brought her home from the hospital, and her father, he passed away. He passed away that same day. We brought her home from the hospital. I knew my father. He lived in the same town as me. I never really had a relationship with him the way that I would have liked to, so I was raised with, with my mother. It wasn't a mother-daughter relationship. It was more of a, a friendship that was kind of toxic. And at the age of um, 27, I did get married and I had three more daughters with that marriage. And I endured a lot in that marriage that was, that I know now was toxic, that I know now was an ab abusive situation. I had to change that because I saw my mother do that. I saw my mother with my stepfather would do hideous things to us or even to her. Two years ago, two, two, almost three years ago, two and a half years ago, I, I was pregnant with my fourth daughter. I went to the doctor and I um, 
just he saw how down I was and he recommended I, did, I had done this questionnaire and I, I completed the questionnaire and probably a month later I received a phone call from Patricia Elder and Alejandra. I, I, I explained to them my situation and they, were, and they were very open and honest and they said well we can work with you let's just try something and we'll see how the chemistry goes and how you're feeling and what's your availability and we'll go from there. They came to my home and um, they talked about the services that they provided which was counseling and I agreed. <laughs> They offered support for my, my, my daughters. They went to their schools, the daycare. Um, I was given a crib for my baby. <laughs> they were able to help me refocus my energy, refocus my thought process, and really dig down deep into what I have been through and understand my trauma so that I wouldn't continue to repeat the, the cycle, the patterns. It was my selfishness. I was selfish to allow my children and myself to endure the things that we went through because of my idea of a happy ending. And almost three years later, almost, <laughs> they're still here. What I would say to other moms, I would tell them to just put their pride aside. There are so many resources out there, but don't stay in a situation. You don't want your kids to, to feel that way, have that same similar story to tell 20 years from now to set them in the right direction so that they could be a better person in this world because a troubled child will definitely turn into a troubled adult the donations that are given to this program it it paves the way for a lot of women who can't help themselves who can't or don't know the resources out there. It's very needed. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Julie Swindler and I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Families First of Palm Beach County. We want to congratulate Herkina for your success. Your family is another prime example of the families you work with day in and day out. Since you are here with us listening to today's program, I want you to know on behalf of the Board of Directors and the staff of Families First that we thank you for allowing us to be part of your journey. You are achieving your dreams and hopes for a better future for your family. Being at Families First from day one, 30 years ago, I have seen firsthand the impact the families we've partnered with are having in our community. I look forward to the impact you will make and the family legacy you will create. I would also like to take a minute to recognize our fantastic and amazing board of directors. You all know that I say this all the time, but we truly have two fantastic boards. On behalf of the staff at Families First, I would like to thank you for giving the agency of your time, your talents, and your treasure, sounds like I'm at church, uh, for embracing our mission and continuing our work in Palm Beach County. I would now like to introduce and welcome Dominic Macri, our Foundation Board President. Thank you, Julie. It's an honor to serve as uh, President of the Families First Foundation and support the amazing and impactful work of Families First in our community. When you hear these stories from our clients, which I'm always speaking after and I'm always choked up about <laughs> hearing them, just stop and think that these are just two examples of over 45,000 families that uh, Families First has served since its inception 30 years ago. I can't imagine where these families would be without the services we provide to the community. 
Every one of us can contribute to these success stories in order to make an impact on the lives of those families struggling within our community. Every contribution that is made today is a statement to these families that they are not alone, that their neighbors and their community care about them. As my counterpart, Mr. Mercator made reference to, it's an investment in the county's future, but more importantly, it's an investment in our children's future. We are all in this together and your support helps us expand our programs to serve even more families. You will be receiving a link on your mobile phone. If you didn't earlier, please take a minute to make a donation to Families First. Our work cannot continue without your support. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. On behalf of the staff, board members, Jordan and myself, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you've enjoyed today's program in addition to learning more about the best kept secret in Palm Beach County, that is Families First. I would also like to congratulate Alex Guanarita for winning the $500 Airbnb stay. Our staff will be in touch with you. Well, Ronnie had the pleasure of announcing the Airbnb, Airbnb winner, but uh, we still have a number of amazing auction items. So remember, you have until 2 p.m. today to make your final bids. And don't forget, we've got some wonderful items you don't want to miss out on. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, and I want to leave you with a performance from our talented kids at UB Kinsey. Have a great weekend, everybody. And thanks again.